Good afternoon, friends. Uh, my today's session is uh, on mechanics of solids. Uh, myself, Ruchi Srivastav, working as reader in Paru Institute of Engineering Technology, Vagodia Limra. Uh, in today's session, we are going to study regarding the beams and supports, what are the different types of loads, what are the different types of uh, uh, support reactions that are produced due to different types of supports. To start with, uh, we know that uh, a building has different types of components. Uh, components like uh, beams, columns, doors, windows and all these components exert force on one another. This particular figure shows that there is a horizontal member which is supported on columns and the load of that particular column is transferred in the foundation or in the soil. So basically in our today's session we are going to study regarding the beams and what are the different types of loads that are coming on a beam. To define a beam we can say that it is a horizontal structural member which has uh, one dimension that is length considerably much larger as compared to that of width and depth and it is basically supported either on two or more than two supports. Uh, now when we are talking about the different types of loads coming on the beam, it is generally observed that beam is subjected to transfer type of load and these transverse loads are basically either at an angle of 90 degree or sometimes they are inclined at a particular angle. Now when this beam is subjected to a load, definitely the beam is going to bend or deflect. Thus to overcome the deflection or bending on the beam, we have to give a certain support to the beams. That is why a beam which is resting on supports, it remains in equilibrium because it is supported either by the help of column or it is supported by the help of uh, walls. Now what is the need for a support? So there are three important points for which the support is required. The first is deformation second is bending and third is instability. To start with deformation, the once the beam is loaded transversely or it is loaded with the help of uh, certain loads, definitely it is going to deflect. To overcome this deflection, if it is supported on the column or wall, it will resist the deformation. Second is bending, we know that when a beam is subjected to a transverse load, uh, it will be uh, having two types of stresses induced. One stress is called as compression st uh, stress and second is called as tensile stress. Now if we want the beam to be in equilibrium, the net effect of both the stresses should be zero. And to get that particular effect, the beam is supported either on column or wall. And the third is instability, that is whether the beam is stable or instable. Now to have the beam to be a stable, we have to determine whether it is a determinate beam or indeterminate beam, which depends upon the static conditions of equilibrium. Now we come to the topic that is support reactions. Support reaction, the word itself suggests that the forces are developed to resist the load coming on the structure and these resistive forces are developed on supports. So that is nothing but a support reaction. If a support prevents the translation of a body in a given direction, then a force is developed on the body in that particular direction. This force is called as a support reaction. A very simple example is a block resting on a table. That means when a block is resting on a table, it has got some self weight and that self weight will, uh, uh, will be pointed towards center of gravity that is in the vertical downward direction. Now due to this particular vertical downward self weight, the block should move in the downward direction but it is not falling in the downward direction because the support or the surface of the table is giving a reaction in the direction opposite to the motion. So according to Newton's law, for every action there is some equal and opposite reaction. So we can say that due to this self weight which is in the downward direction, there is some force in the vertical 
of a direction of equal amount and that particular force is called as a reaction force. So, basically three points are to be taken into consideration. The first point is that a reaction is always produced when two surfaces are coming in contact with each other. In this particular case, the two surfaces, uh, uh, surfaces are the surface of the table and the surface of the block. The second important thing that is to be taken into the consideration is that the reaction is produced always in the direction opposite to the motion of a body. In our example, due to the self weight, the block should move in the downward direction, but the table surface is producing a reaction in the vertical upward direction. And the third and the most important point is the reaction is always produced at an angle of 90 degree to the point of contact of the surface. So, in this particular case, the surface is horizontal. When the surface is horizontal, the 90 degree will be a vertical line. So, a reaction is produced at an angle of 90 degree to the surface. Now, we come to the different types of supports. As I have already mentioned, the supports are basically either in the form of a column or in the form of a wall. So, there are different types of supports. The first support is called as a simple support, second support is called as a roller support, third is called as a hinge support and fourth is called as a fixed support. Uh, this particular diagram shows that it is a simple support. Simple support means the beam is resting simply on a pivot. The second figure shows that the beam is resting on number of columns or abutments provided on the bridge. Now, when the beam is simply resting on the support and it is subjected to a transverse force F, the beam should try to fall in the vertical downward direction, but it is not falling in the vertical direction uh, downward direction because at the pivots or at the support there are two vertical upward reactions produced at an angle of 90 degree. So, we can say that if the beam rests simply on a support, it is called as a simple support. Second is reaction is always produced at an angle of 90 degree and third is beam is free to move in the direction of its axis. The second support is a roller support. To give a very simple example, I have taken the example of a skates. Everyone wears a skate when they are in their young age for skating purpose. Now, we know from our experience that when we are putting on the skate, we are either moving in this forward direction or we are moving in the reverse direction depending upon our uh, load or depending upon the weight of our body. But if we try to translate or if we try to move with the help of uh, rollers sidewards, we are unable to move. Why? Because rollers are frictionless and they try to slide in the direction of application of the force. So, basically resistance to the motion when rollers are used is in the vertical direction. So, there is one reaction produced in the vertical direction. Another example of the rollers is, another example of the roller is generally rollers are used when we are uh, constructing bridges or when we are constructing flyovers. When bridges are constructed, when the bridges are constructed or on the flyovers, we, can, we are seeing certain gaps after uh, half an kilometer or after um, 1 kilometer. What are these basically gaps? Now, flyovers are basically used to move heavy loads. When a truck is moving, what will happen? The rollers will try, try to slide in the forward direction. It is not visible to us, but it will uh, try to move in the forward direction. Very micron movement is there. Now, when that particular movement is there, what will happen? The load will be not concentrated at one particular point and it will be moved or it will be transferred throughout the length of the flyover. So, if the load is not concentrated at one particular point, there the chances of failure of that particular structure is reduced. So, that is another uh, use of the roller support. So, roller support is basically reaction is always normal to the support. Okay. Reaction is always normal to the support since rollers can be treated as frictionless, beam is free to move along the support and it can rotate about the support also. Therefore, whenever we have got a roller support, there is only one vertical reaction in the 
direction depending upon the inclination of the support. Then we have got third support that is a hinge support. Now I think everyone has uh, come across hinges uh, to recall whenever we open a door or whenever we open a window, the windows or the doors are connected to the frames with the help of hinges. That means there is either a movement that is in the form of a movement rotation, but there is no movement in the horizontal or vertical direction. So, whenever there is a hinge support, we have got two reactions, one reaction in the horizontal direction, one reaction in the vertical direction. So, at a hinge and beam cannot move in any direction, beam can rotate about support, thus the support will not develop any resisting moment, but it can de develop reaction in any direction to keep the ant stationary. The last support that we are going to study is a fixed support. Now before coming to a fixed support, I just want to give you a simple example. Suppose we take this as a uh, rectangular object. Now if I want to find out for this particular rectangular object, uh, the center of gravity, we know that for a rectangle, the center of gravity, uh, rectangle, for a rectangle, the center of gravity basically uh, is obtained by the intersection of a diagonal. Now, if I apply the load such that the line of action of the force coincides with the CG of the section. When it is coinciding with the CG of the section, what will happen? The block will try to translate in the direction of application of the force. That is, we call it as a translatory motion. But suppose if I apply a force in such a way that it is not coinciding with the CG. So, what will happen? What will happen? It will try to produce a force and that force will be a rotational, mov mov rotational movement. That means when the line of action of the force does not coincide with the CG of the section, it tries to produce rotation. So, whenever we have got a fixed support, the motion of the object or a body is restricted in all the three directions. That is where there will be three reactions, one will be the horizontal reaction, second will be the vertical reaction and third will be the rotational movement. So, for a fixed support we can say that the beam uh, and is not free to translate or rotate, hence there are three reactions, one is vertical, second is horizontal and third is the moment. Now we come to a summary of the different types of supports. So, we can say different types of supports, simple roller and hinge. Uh, two or more vertical supports are there for a simple support. For a roller support, there is usually one reaction and for hinge support, there are two reactions. Now we come to different types of beams. Now for the different types of beams, basically there are many types of the beams, but in our syllabus, we are going to study mainly four types of beams. The first beam we call it as a simply supported beam. For a simply supported beam, the beam is freely resting on the support. So, we can see that one support is a roller support, second support is a hinge support and the horizontal member is resting on that particular beam. So, that is called as a simply supported beam. Second type of a beam is called as a overhanging beam. For the overhanging beam, we can say that there is a supports are two, but one part of the beam is projected outwards. So, we can say that in this particular case, the right portion of the beam is projected outwards. So, this we call it as a right side overhang. Similarly, if the left side of the beam is projected outwards, we call it as a left side overhang. And if both the ends of the beams are projected and the supports are in between, then we call it as a both side overhang. Third type of a beam is a cantilever beam. The diagram itself shows that one end of the beam is fixed in the uh, wall and the another end is totally free. So, when the one end is fixed and another end is free, that particular type of a beam is called as a cantilever beam. A simple example of a cantilever beam we can uh, generally see is in the balconies. A balcony is projected from the room. So, to support that particular balcony, we have got a cantilever type of a beam. Then we have got a continuous beam. The word continuous itself suggests that the supports are more than two. 
when there are supports which are more than two on a particular beam that particular type of a beam is called as a continuous beam. The important part of the continuous beam is that the length of the beam is much more that is it may be 4 meters, 5 meters or 6 meters. So, it cannot rest on two supports it will uh, deflect under the application of load. So, avoid that particular deflection we have to provide more than two types of supports in that particular type of a beam. So, here we can see that one is a roller support, one is a hinge support and the third one is a fixed support. Now, we, we are talking about the loads, we are talking about the reactions, but what are the different types of loads? In civil engineering, the loads we classify or whenever we are designing a particular structure, the different types of loads that we study are a dead load, a live load, a wind load and an earthquake load. And one more load is there that is called as water pressure load. To start with dead load, dead load is nothing but it is the self weight of the structure. If I talk about, if I talk about a beam, if I talk about a column, if I talk about a wall, so the dead load of that particular or the self weight of that particular components is nothing but the dead load. Second type of load that we are studying is or that we are going to study is a live load. Live word itself suggest, uh, suggest it is a moving load that is load due to the persons in the floor or a building. Third type of load that we are going to have is an earthquake load. If we are constructing a building in a region where it is uh, prominent earthquakes are prominent then while designing that particular building we have to take the earthquake loads also and generally nowadays whenever we are designing a building we are taking into consideration the earthquake load. Next load is the wind load. 